And we live. Oh, snap. Hey, everybody. I'm here with Jay from Get FPV and Johnny FPV. You may have heard of him. What's up, guys? That's it. He's visiting us here at our headquarters here in Sarasota, and we wanted to take a chance to talk with him, maybe give you guys a chance to ask some questions, hang out with Johnny for a little bit, and we wanted to kind of just catch up with you, Johnny, see what's going on, share with your fans, some of the FPV people out there, uh, what's what's your life been like and what's exciting for you? I know you're working on a lot of projects and we've seen a lot of amazing videos come out of you recently with some of your FPV skills showcasing and we just want to talk about it and sure. see what's going up. Yeah, I mean, just as like a quick overview of like my journey in FPV, I don't know, I kind of started in the racing and freestyle kind of scene and really got into that. Yeah, what, what year was it kind of that you started? Oh, now, I think around five years ago. So 2014, 15? Yeah, uh, 20, late or early 2015, so maybe four and a half years. Okay. In drone years, that's like a long time. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty, it's pretty, long. pretty, pretty up there. That's it's pretty good. It's respectable. It's respectable. <laughs> um, yeah, I remember seeing Charpu, Charpu's videos way back in the day, and like the next day buying a little micro drone and just getting sucked into the whole environment and the whole, whole world of FPV. And, yeah, and uh, I think like a year after that, uh, I found myself in Dubai, like for the, or maybe it was two years after that, found myself in Dubai for the World Trump Prix, right mm -hmm. and I was there for so long, I, it was when I was a freshman in university, and I decided just to stop doing the whole school thing, which was a little bit of a full send, perhaps too much of a send. I think that's what I remember when I first kind of really heard about you flying, because I remember you were in the freestyle competition, and I remember talking that you had been there practicing for a while to get ready for it, right? Yeah, yeah. I, um, there was a company called Skydive Dubai, still a yeah. big thing there. And uh, I became friends with the guy, Jeremiah Fleming, in the drone industry. Yeah, he came cool. out with this. He was one of the early kind of innovators, I yeah. suppose. You we, could carried, say. we carried some of his frames and stuff back, back in the day. It's the yeah. weird dihedral one that had a little... And the arms came up at an angle. It's pretty cool. Anyhow, I uh, joined his team, the World Drone Prix, and Skydive Dubai had some form of sponsorship in it. And uh, anyhow, I, I was out there. So that was kind of the start of my perhaps professional journey, or more like time-intensive journey, where I was really putting everything into FPV. And... Um, yeah, so I did the whole racing scene a little bit, got really into freestyle. You know, that's, I would say, my roots, making these funky videos, doing the whole juicy thing. The that juice. Kind of, <laughs> the juicy <laughs> style. Um, and that whole, like, I don't know what you would want to call it, the whole flick thing. And creating that and seeing that evolve with other pilots kind of uh, uh, contributing their own style. Yeah, that style that you're talking about, I, I remember, the before that was a thing, because like it is, it was kind of new when it first came out, yeah. and, and you kind of pioneered that that kind of like it's almost like a smooth robotic feel. I don't know how to describe it exactly, but like you have very smooth tra transitions, but then there's kind of like just just like just movement where you're going here, and then all of a sudden you're going here, and then it's like smooth, and you're here, then you're smooth. Like how would you describe sure. it? What it is? Like what do you do? I would say it's it's kind of just like bouncing around. Yeah. Um, and it was it wasn't something I was really trying to do. Somehow I just had something that my hands wanted to, you know, have that weird movement or that cool movement. And uh, people, I think, really appreciate and enjoy seeing something new all the time. Any innovation, really in any industry, obviously, it kind of, um, it can become a thing. Yeah. And uh, not a standard, but, you know, whole, a whole avenue on its own. So that was really freaking awesome to see people pick it up and really appreciate it. Yeah. And then... Kind of, you know, I did that for a while, and I still freestyle, let's say, still my, my roots, really. But I've my, my whole thing in this space has been innovating and staying, trying to stay on top of um, the evolution of it. So evolving from, like, racing, freestyle, to more cinematography now, and uh, really chasing that new that new thing and really going after it. And um, that's, that's my obsession now, just trying to do something new and fresh, in a way that's still tied back to the FPV roots, and yeah. Um, yeah, that's kind of that's why I find myself more in doing a lot of filming now because you get to integrate all these incredible people doing their expertise. So these crazy athletes yeah. doing performing at their highest level and trying to capture them in that new way, and and like seeing the reactions of these people, the whether it's the athletes or the the production, the people who. Uh, might be organizing the thing 
they they're amazed by it. So that that's really special for me to see because it's obviously it's something I've really dedicated my entire existence to for the last five years. So. Yeah. Um, yeah it's, again, it's that's always all. I mean, for us watching on the outside, following you, you know, on your Instagram and everything, it's been really exciting because it's like you get to live vicariously a little bit through Johnny and his yeah. his <laughs> adventures. But it's been cool that you've been able to kind of bust outside of just the smaller FBV community that we are. Yeah. That you're getting to to me like at the celebrity level in some cases, even you know, where you're you're getting to share what we love with with people that haven't seen it before, and then like. Like you said, like you could show them what you can do with it and how it's just mind blowing for them the first time to see it. Sure. And that's so cool to, to get it out to that audience that's never seen it before. And then it gives you or that platform that you can really push it out to. We can really spread what we love of FPV to so many people that have no idea that it even exists, right? Unless you see Absolutely. a video like that like you post or you get to fly with like Will Smith or like you say, some of the <laughs> professional athletes that you've been with. Yeah. If, if you were to pick something in this last year, like what was what was one of the more favorite events that you've got to be a part of? Yeah, the, the my favorite one from like a flying standpoint is probably the most controversial. It was in South Africa, um, filming wildlife. Yeah, you know, kind of safari and uh, it was like oh, a private yeah. reserve yeah. or whatever. It was a private reserve and it, it's a, obviously it's a very controversial thing, but I just wanted to quickly bring it up because it it's like, it was one of the most incredible things I've ever experienced seeing those, those animals in person. Um, but the, again, very controversial, so it's not something I'll pursue heavily yeah. as, uh, yeah, uh, those animals are obviously very endangered. And it, it, at the same time, it was a mission to raise awareness about them. But seeing that, that whole country, South Africa, and the city of Cape Town, um, one of the most like diverse and interesting places I've ever been and uh, I know there's some FPV pilots down there too. That's cool. It's pretty popular. It's amazing to see how worldwide FPV has become. Yeah. And ultimately, I think we have like social media to thank for that, and all these you know new avenues to share video. Um, but yeah, I mean that that's one of my favorite parts of this entire thing. Everything is connected, so you can whether it's networking with people or connecting on a personal level, professional level. The tools that we have now are so advanced and so capable mm -hmm. it's like if you if you have that little inclination or that fire inside of you to do something new or just to 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 do something you've always dreamt of like you can literally do it with your phone and with the tools that are available from you know the drones in my case and then leveraging that in social media um, and yeah I've got to meet incredible people and I've always considered myself a pretty shy person and getting to do these travels and experience all these incredible things, it's really opened up and changed my entire life. Yeah. And it's crazy to think it was because these little drones, these little toys, and uh, but they're so powerful, it's, it's pretty remarkable. Yeah, I mean, I think it's fair to say they've changed all of our lives, you know, we're working in the industry, yeah. <laughs> which we wouldn't have probably thought when we started that that was gonna be a possibility. You're working yeah. in the industry in, in another way, but it's it's been it's been awesome. I think we all really enjoy. It. That's why we yeah. come here every day. We enjoy what we're doing, and you get to do what you like to do with flying. And and now you're adding to like on the, like you said the cinematography side of it, where you're really getting to be artistic with what you're wanting to do and really put your skills to use. Uh, I think I think it's awesome. Uh, why don't we? I guess oh, one one thought I had was for a, for a new pilot, someone who's getting started in FPV. Or he's been flying just for a little bit and maybe he's running into a wall. I guess what was some advice would you like they they know they want to do it, like they it's, right. it's fun for them, but they're trying to figure out like how do I get to the next level? What what would be something you might might tell them that's helped you in the past? Yeah. I've always kind of been uh, I like the, the grassroots aspect because it forces you to learn all the intricacies of building, operating in that entire uh, world. So my, my, my first piece of advice is just like binge watch YouTube videos on this topic. Yeah. So whether it's a building video, just flight videos, immerse yourself in it. It's like an information dump kind of just Yeah, just it. take it all in. And if you're still, you know, loving it or obsessed with it and wanting more, then you know like you're gonna you're gonna want to spend the time when it gets to the maybe slightly more difficult things, building, yeah. building your first drone. I remember it was, now there's a lot more information, so it's not quite as difficult. Mm -hmm. But four years ago, I remember spending a whole week with my dad trying to set up a flight controller. Mm -hmm. And it was, um, I think yeah. we, we stuck to it because we're both um, um, quite hands-on. We like RC things like cars back in the day, airplanes. 
so that was helpful for me. Yeah. But um, yeah, just immerse your, immersing yourself in it, that'll quickly tell you how, how much you enjoy it, how much you care about it, and then uh, hopefully hands on, you could not, or you can pursue it and you know, enjoy the, the, the challenges and that, that'll really help you in the long run from like, yeah, every aspect of building and yeah. all For that. me, I, I kind of remember distinctly, not, not looking back, it feels more distinct, but like these, a few humps that you get over, and once you get over those, it just opens up a whole new door of yeah. possibilities. The first was For like sure. learning what the stuff is and how to build it confidently. And once you get past that point, it, it just makes it feel so much more clear, like how to troubleshoot an issue. You feel more confident in your drone because you know you can repair it if you, if you need to later Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Uh, you don't feel so like just locked in by like, oh, if, if I crash, I'm, I'm not going to be able to yeah. get fly again. So that was one part I remember getting over. And the other one just, that this takes practice as well is, is the flying part. When you get past that curve of where you're thinking of what to do all the time, right? Right. And it's just more of you're doing what you're wanting to do in your head, but you're not having to think, uh, stick left up, you know, and do oh, it. Oh, 100%. Yep. It just, that just takes time, that, that practice to yeah. get there. But I think once you get past that curve, and then you can start expressing if it's freestyle that you want to do, or if it's racing that you want to do, but you can really start hitting your goals that, you know, in your head, you, you know how you want to fly, probably, but you're limited by maybe what your fingers can do and or what you're capable of in the beginning. But once you get past that curve, and then it's just your expression of what you're wanting to do, you do yeah. it in the air. I think that was really opening for me. And I, I mean, I'm still even learning, I haven't flown as much as I used to, but I remember that in the beginning of yeah. getting past that point. And then it made flying feel way different than in the beginning where you're just trying to fly. Yeah, I remember that one of the key things that, I didn't do it on purpose um, really, but one of the key things that really allowed me to expand on my flying skills and whatnot was flying in really tight areas. So I remember just my little backyard uh, back home. I remember your videos, I was always like, how's he flying there? <laughs> yeah, but just forcing yourself to fly in these tiny tight areas I think it um, just gave me a really pretty good sense of overall control feel. Yeah. So not pushing your limits beyond what you're comfortable with. Absolutely, but yeah. doing doing it from the start, so it's kind of ingrained yeah. in your in your ability, I suppose. Yeah. And uh, yeah, forcing yourself to do these kind of wacky maneuvers around things. And that that probably is why I d somehow developed that kind of juicy style. Uh -huh. It was definitely from those tight, you know, tree tree dense areas. And um, so that's always like one of my recommendations to people: um, force yourself to, to be uncomfortable. Uh, really, in any in any industry, forcing yourself to try new things and be uncomfortable. That's how you learn, and that's how you get really good at something. So that's solid I don't know. advice. Yeah, yeah. That's solid advice for anything. Yeah, anything. absolutely. Anything. Yeah. But. Um, so I mean, we do have a couple questions rolling on in. If you feel nice. like uh, getting on a couple, but Jake yeah. out there in Montana. I think it's Montana. How long did it take to get the smooths? The smooths. I think he's talking about the juice. <laughs> um, over time, man. Like I, so now I look back on some of my older videos that I remember, kind of defined what I was doing. Now I kind of cringe at them, but so it's really funny the evolution of um, what you know myself or anyone else perceives as uh, a high level or interesting or cool, um, but. I don't know, just like always trying it. And I, I, one of the things was also, I, I'm a huge perfectionist. So I, I always try and one up myself and having that fire uh, in your intention and whatnot and forcing yourself to try and achieve those, you know, take it up each notch each time. Yeah. Um, that really forces yourself to just improve and it's probably. I agree. One big thing that always helped me was like never be afraid to fail. Oh, absolutely. Like, I think that's that's a big one. Yeah. Yeah, I, I always get the best flights when I get to the point where I'm just, I'm like, I don't care anymore almost. Overly confident. Yeah. I'm kind of, I mean, there's a balance, but like, there's been a few where it's like, I don't care if I break the squad at this point. And I, yeah. I just go for it, and then I'm like, wow, why didn't I do that at the beginning? Oh, yeah. The footage is so much better. Yeah. I mean, it's a risk that you, you, you take, but sometimes the payoff is worth it. Yeah. You to push a little harder than you feel comfortable with. Yeah. You know, be safe when you're doing it, of course, but, uh... Yeah. Those angry light bows. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We have a question from, uh, Ryan Lindsay. She, she says, what country would you like to visit and fly that you haven't yet? And she also asked, do you edit your own videos? So that's the second question. Yeah. What's the country? Um, I really like the crazy kind of ancient city. So anything where there's a natural, whether it's like a, 
a man-made thing, but you know, old school. Um, so recently I did a crazy thing in Guatemala where we trekked to these ancient Mayan pyramids. And, but something I want to do, or a country, um, maybe like a Morocco or something. Maybe cool. Like, Morocco, like yeah, like a Morocco would be sick. Um, Let's do it in Morocco. Yeah? You live there. Got some yeah. connections. Yeah, Stu, connection. tell us about Morocco. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, it's man. really difficult to get a drone there. Probably. So we might need to oh, find yeah. some people who can pull, pull a couple strings, but... Um, Just mail in one part a week. Yeah, but any, honestly, <laughs> anywhere where there's like a nice sunset, like, it's awesome. Just flying in, in really beautiful lighting, I really enjoy that. Um, but yeah, like in Morocco. And then... The follow-up uh, was, uh, yeah, do you edit your own videos? Yeah, I, I edit all my um, all my recent stuff. There is so that beautiful the one in Turkey. It was um, the guys who did that trip, beautiful destinations. They they helped edit that one, and then I'm trying. So one of my issues is actually I'm too much of a perfectionist. So trying to one up yourself can also be extremely toxic because you you don't let yourself uh, fail, I guess, and you or you maybe you do, but you don't like to show that. So I'm trying to get to a point where I can um, get more efficient with the editing and just put out more fun, you know, back back to the roots a little bit, just yeah. enjoying it. Well, still up, upholding like awesome, awesome stuff, but yeah. that's that's something I'm working on for sure. One thing I took from, uh, I watched a lot of like Peter McKinnon and like a lot of those video editors and stuff, but one was like talking about exactly like that. Not, not like a, a writer's block thing, but not wanting to put out something that you feel is not perfect, sure. but kind of sounds crappy because I had like a child teacher that said, don't say this, but be okay with good enough sometimes. For sure, for sure. Sometimes 90% is all you can get and that's better than 100% because you'll never put it out. You won't ever get to 100. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's an evolving process, but yeah. Uh, uh, pinch or thumbs, I'm gonna ask. I use thumbs. Um, it's, I think it, I don't think there's any real advantage to either. I think it's whatever you start with. There's no need to try or do a different one. Um, ultimately, the, the, you can, you can make the claim you get more precise with two, two, you know, fingers or, you know, uh, touching points, but, uh, whatever you, you're using, it's probably good enough. And I use thumbs, so. I'm with you. thumbs. Nice. Heard it. You too? <laughs> Um, it's all the same. Well, it's all the same. Yeah, and like one of our guys upstairs, like one of the engineers, he totally rips, and he does one of each. Like, yeah, on different. different yeah, <laughs> no way. Yeah. Like one is thumb and one is pinching, and dudes like epic. Some people do like a thumb pinch hybrid. Yeah, yeah. Like, like that, that velociraptor. I agree. That mean, I mean, it's all. What is this? What are you doing? What are you practice with it? I think that's that's gonna be what's gonna work. Here. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I mean, don't be afraid to try it. Do I mean, if you're thumbing now, why don't you try pinching? See if it's something that you like. And I think it's worth trying at least. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, someone says they do FPV as a therapy thing. Nice. Is that, is that something That's for you? Do you feel like it's an escape when you're flying sometimes? Yeah. I whenever I like like to fly just for fun with some buddies, I like to t take a GoPro off, and it like immediately changes your mindset. I think everyone is very caught up in the system of trying to produce some sort of content footage or to capture footage. Yeah. And it's really funny, the internal kind of natural switch once you take a GoPro off, yeah. all of a sudden you're just enjoying the flying. And that's something I'm doing more recently, which cool. is I recommend people do. You get a chance to fly with other buddies flying with you much? Yeah, I've, uh, I've, I've like a lot of people want to get into FPV right now. So I've um, been fortunate enough to like, uh, show a few close friends uh, the ropes and to get into it. So I really enjoy flying with those guys who I've been uh, friends with prior to FPV. Cool. And then guys who fly FPV always love to fly um, because then, you, you know, it's like, it's engraved in what we do. So having both is really cool to me. Um, and yeah, I love flying with people. Cool. Thank you. Here's a fun one from FPV, great. ND filter all day, every day? Well, it depends on how bright it is outside. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, well, Arda. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. On a rainy day, what would you do if it's cloudy? Yeah, well, ultimately, having an ND filter, uh, it's just you're changing the shutter speed. So if you want motion blur, you need an ND filter, or if it's bright out, or if it's not bright out, you don't need one. Um, 
But yeah, the natural, our natural eyesight, there is motion blur. And that's why um, having any filter or motion blur in a video can uh, be perceived as more natural. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I much prefer that look for sure. So let's just say it's a sunny day, what, what would you usually put on? Um, yeah, 16 or 32, it depends. Sometimes it can be too blurry, yeah. so 32 might be overkill sometimes, but any 16 on a sunny, sunny day is usually pretty solid. And then if it's a, a little, little uh, not quite as bright, say, you know, toward late, later in the day, like an ND8 or a 4. And uh, yeah. maybe we'll do a little tip for behind the scenes, like a GoPro setting, like what, what, what do you often use? Are you like in manual stuff? Do you shoot it like in a raw type format where you're color grading later? Or how do you usually do that type of stuff? I prefer to leave it as raw as possible so you could change it as much as you want to or uh, as much as the camera is capable of letting you. So like in a GoPro flat color profile, okay. but it's kind of interesting. The the GoPro team like in the ISO, are you looking at a manual or are you doing? You want it, You want the ISO as low as possible. Yeah. Obviously, with the tiny sensor on the GoPro, the internal sensor that captures the image or the, the light, it um, it's small, so it can't actually bring in that much light. So on some nicer cameras, you could push the ISO up. On a GoPro, you want it at like 100 or 200 max um, for sure. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of interesting, uh, the GoPro professional like team who um, are out filming GoPro videos for Go, uh, you know, the GoPro launches and whatnot, they actually prefer using GoPro Color. So they, it's using a flat profile is definitely not critical. Okay. And uh, that was kind of interesting Color is like their preset setting or something for that? Yeah, it's, well it's internal in the camera, so it's just the GoPro Color. And um, so I always uh, thought that was kind of a bad thing, but it's actually really good, the GoPro, yeah. Cool. So. Yeah, everything comes out really nice and saturated well. Yeah, yeah, you don't need to do Only, that much work. Yeah, rarely is it ever like too much. Right, like, right. I remember it was St. Patty's Day, I flew over a Green River, and it was just, I flew on GoPro color, and it was totally like the lime green of that level. Or, but nice. it, it looked off more. Glowing? <laughs> yeah, I could not fix it in post it's at all. Right. But, yeah. For those of you who don't know too, we've been working with Johnny here at Get It PV and Luminaire for some years now. We met you years back and we really enjoyed working with you. I, you've been holding these motors. So these are the Johnny 2207 motors. Yeah, yeah. he has a... Uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> if you guys don't know, <laughs> we have... Uh, these came out... Um, well, these are the V2s, but about a year ago, and they're the motors I fly. They're in collaboration with Luminaire and Get It PV, and uh, they're really awesome. <laughs> But it's just super smooth and uh, different KVs for different battery types for like flying. Yep, so we have the 1700, right? Yeah, so the newer 1750s for 6L, but the, the OG27. So I, I always used to fly 4S for freestyle on these high KV motors, high KV. And uh, that was kind of the, my freestyle vibe. And now I'm using these a lot, but on 5L. So it ends up being actually more powerful than these guys. And. Um, but the lower KV helps it not be too too crazy. But uh, yeah, so I'm normally on five cell now. Which is, um, yeah, I think those ones would be good for a six. This, yeah, this is the six cell motor. So when I do some of my filming, when I need more flight time or efficiency, six cell. This is uh, my motor on one of my setups, which is really nice. And, and then of course you got the Johnny the Johnny props. These are the Azure Power ones. You may yeah. have seen them. We carry them here. Get the and they, these and motors more. <laughs> they're great. But these propellers are, um, they kind of have a very smooth and docile feel. Yeah. So for flying smooth, they're really great. And uh, so for a smoother freestyle or filming, they are uh, really, really good. Um, and they're in collaboration with Azure, and they got a nice little juicy sticker in there. Whoa, get that juice. That's pretty sweet. Pretty sweet yeah. We have this in front of us too. This, you guys oh, yeah, see yeah. this is the DJI system here. So this is the new digital HD system. Goggles, uh, radio controller. I don't know if you guys all saw the promo video when DJ first released it, announced it, but Johnny was actually in that video. He flew the system for them, and they demo used some of his footage, and and they used him in, in the video, which was really cool. Yeah. I just want to get maybe your quick take on the system and what your involvement was with DJI, how that went. For sure. So I um, they con DJI hit me up a few minutes or a few about a month prior to the launch. And they let me know about the new system and they wanted to um, have me come out to Iceland and test it. And um, I mean, aesthetically, it's like a fighter jet pilot mask, kind of kind of badass. It doesn't fit that perfectly on the face, but with some like foam inserts, it's probably, 
you could probably get to that, you know, that perfect uh, feel. But I know it's once you're flying, you kind of forget about it. Though. Yeah, hundred percent. It's the flying experience is pretty remarkable. It's it's like so FPV in general is a very visual thing, but having in the, the videos obviously are all about the visual and how you capture footage. But when you're flying via analog, you kind of forget that. And so flying this in Iceland for the first time, it was probably the most fun I had flying in, um, in literally years. Yeah. And it was, I was just absorbing so much information. It was like an overload of like pure bliss. It was uh, pretty remarkable. And um, yeah, that, I mean, it's in 720, but because the, the screens in here are so sharp, it literally looks like 4K coming from analog, and right. it's, I don't know how much you used it, but it was... Jay and I got the demo yeah, a couple weeks back when we first got it, we flew yeah. it just around the park, and uh, it was wow. cool experience. I mean, we were both kind of cruising pretty chill, but yeah. we weren't thinking about flying hard, we were just like, you know, exploring, because it was yeah. cool yeah. to look around. We were going through the trees, you could see all, you could see all the moss the and dead branches 100%. that you would have never see before, which yeah. was just kind of, it was a new way to fly, so it just felt like you're learning kind of not quite learning, but it was a whole new experience. Right. And I, I just like how they're trying to make it simple for people. So obviously the biggest thing, the biggest barrier of FPV is it's very complex, especially if you don't know, if you haven't, you know, done yeah, it. Yeah, when you've been at it for a while, you kind of forget that first little learning curve and yeah. hump, I feel like. For and, sure. And it is, you see it, you're like, that's awesome, I want to do it. And then you start researching, you're like, oh, wait, what do I have to do? <laughs> right. And it's, it's a barrier, right, to get in. It's a barrier. And that, that's one reason I really appreciate what DJI is trying to do here and where, where they're moving towards. And I, I don't know if they'll ever come out with the, a full-on drone, but just from like a building standpoint, it helps save a little bit of time. Sure. And uh, that aspect is always important to me, but. Yeah, for those who don't know, the air units here, they have the HD camera here as well. And then the air unit additionally can record video on an SD card. So it does 1080p recording from this camera. It also can do the control link to your radio all in the same box as well as the video transmission going to the goggle. So it, it kind of takes care of your camera, your VTX, and your radio receiver all in one, if you were to compare it to what the analog system would have to do to also transmit video and control your drone. Right. So it, it is nice from that standpoint because it, it kind of combines it all into this one system. Yeah. So I agree with you there. Um, we've actually been working with Johnny and, and we'll probably be making something available soon of an RTF, one of, one of our Luminar frames, pre-built with this system in there. So if you're wanting to try HDFPV and maybe you're not wanting to build or you're not quite sure of how to get started, the system is gonna give you like everything you need out of the box to fly HDFPV um, by just pretty much arming it and, and learning, you know. So yep. that, that'll be pretty cool. You, I mean, you've told us all the time, of course, with the audience that you're, you've been building now, a lot of them haven't seen FPV yet before. Yeah. So they're asking you all the time, like, hey, what should I get? How do I, how do I start? Yeah, I, I literally never know Literally, I, yeah, I never know what to tell people who want to get into FPV because I just, I refer, I tell them, go binge watch some videos and absorb it all, but that's not a very practical step. And so one of my biggest goals, and, you know, since, since well, probably a year ago, with alongside these videos I, I do, is to try and let the person who sees the footage, thinks it's really interesting, thinks, to get, you know, gets really hyped on it, how can they try out PV? And that's something that uh, that's a mission of mine and that's something that hopefully will be solved you know uh, in the future but um, yeah the, the system's really cool especially if you fly to, to enjoy flying uh, because it really takes the whole visual aspect up like 10x and um, so it's one of my well my, my current DJI setup is in a river in Iceland I, 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 I crashed I crashed into a fence and it like ricocheted the drone in, the, in this weird direction, ended up in a river right where it like breaks and there's a little waterfall going into it. Anyhow, couldn't recover it. Probably pretty cold. Probably pretty cold. Um, we, we did actually try and go in into this like frigid water with a dry suit or a wet suit in Iceland, um, but the current was just way too strong so you couldn't, you literally could not move in this water, even though it didn't look that crazy. Yeah. That's just the power of nature. Water is powerful, man. Um, but yeah. Cold water is the worst, and you literally can't. It freezes your body. Yeah. That's the worst. It's crazy. Someone asked uh, a little bit ago, they're asking if you have been experimenting or doing any kind of recording outside of a GoPro camera, which I think we talked about earlier. Maybe you want to share a little bit of some of the other setups that you use. Sure, yeah. I mean, to be honest, 99% of everything I've done is on a GoPro. 
but there's cameras are always getting smaller and smaller. So uh, I mean, Sony has a camera called the RX Zero. Yeah, the thing is, the field of view is very tight on it. So a GoPro is maybe yay big, super view yay big, yeah. and the Sony camera, the, the picture quality is super super nice, uh, but it's very tight. It's only 4K 30 or 24, and I think there's something internal where it it just transfers vibrations uh, at a higher level. Okay. So it's not a great solution, but if you're trying to capture higher quality images, Sony R Zero is one to look at. And uh, eventually it would be very cool to get a, you know, an FPV centric setup that still maintains the, the, you know, the roll and the pitch with a, like a cinema camera. But cinema cameras are super heavy and the lenses on them are super, super heavy. Right. They're also very expensive. Very expensive. <laughs> That's yeah, what I'm you need some. You, and you've done like a, even at the DSLR level or something like that. You you kind of yeah, that a little bit. About actually probably th almost three years ago now, I put a uh, Black Magic pocket camera uh, on a on a drone. It, it shoots raw, and if you don't know, raw is the the most um, the highest data retention uh, video codec, um, and it kind of failed. Like, like the camera itself is incredible, but the field of view is very tight. My, my drone I was using on kind of sucked. But, uh, so now I'm starting to experiment with that again and trying to bring some higher quality images uh, into FPV. So that's a fun project, but it's still ongoing. Yeah, and you're getting, now you're, you're exploring more too. I, I know five inch is probably like your quarter rig that you fly a lot. Yeah, so you're yeah. doing smaller stuff and bigger stuff depending on the situation. Yeah, so. You've flown some three inch I've seen like on some tighter shots that you need prop guards to be a little safer yeah. with where you're flying or whatever it is. Can okay. talk about that a little bit? Sure, yeah, yeah. I mean, safety of course is super important. So uh, you never want to like try and get super close to a subject or someone you're filming without prop guards. So I've, um, there's, I have a, a, a three-inch setup that has the guards on it. Uh -huh. Pretty sure it's by Shen Drones and uh, the Squirt, I think. The Squirt, yeah. Do you guys do you sell Squirt? Yeah, V2. It's available on <laughs> Get <a> <laughs> website. I use that code here's John. You've heard ten percent off. Oh yeah. yeah, if you guys are looking to get some hot new FPV gear, there's uh, I think these guys set up a uh, cool uh, coupon code for today. Yeah, today only. Here, here's Johnny, and it's one word, so H E R E S. J O H N N Y. Here's Johnny. And you'll save some, save some money. <laughs> hey, just scroll on up, um, up there somewhere. But yeah, the recent video, I, I did a video with Audi and or Audi, um, where we we I brought in a uh, freestyle uh, soccer player. So the, the, there's these crazy guys out there who have like the foot skills. Yeah, they like juggle like forever, basically. They juggle, but in the most insane way. Yeah. Like it. It's just break like break dancing soccer something hybrid. Break that's a, that's a good um <laughs> it's it's really incredible though, but I took a three inch drone, three inch shen drone, and did basically freestyle with the freestyle uh, yeah. soccer player. Yeah. And the result was pretty pretty epic. So um yeah, there's all these different ways you can innovate with FPV because it's so dynamic. You just need to try new things and um that was kind of a risk going in. We didn't know if it would be cool and it turned out incredible. Yeah. So that that's part of like innovating, and you, sometimes it'll fail, sometimes it'll work. But yeah, you want to talk about anything that you have coming up that you're excited about? Maybe people can be on the lookout for. Sure. I mean, I'm doing a lot of car stuff, so um, I I have like so much footage saved up, and I kind of I'm kind of you know, hating myself right now for not getting getting it out on time, like right when I put it on Instagram or something. So I have a lot of my footage on Instagram, but. I've been uh, lucky enough to visit some like just absolutely insane places and fly in some honestly ri ridiculous places um, like the Grand Mosque in Abu Dhabi and just all over the world. Um, but some new drifting stuff will be coming out soon. Um, and I did a trip in Gua Guatemala and uh, filmed some monkeys. Little yeah, you get... showed me a teaser that's gonna be pretty awesome. In the monkey it looks like. I don't know how you got those shots, that was awesome. Straight Tarzan vibes. Um, the monkeys definitely didn't like it, but at the same time, like I didn't get that close. They clearly didn't care that much. They they throw, you know, their own feces at people when they see them in the jungle, so it's just naturally they're kind of like funny, funny animals. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of car stuff and some fun stuff. I won't uh, I'll try and get it out ASAP, but and you got something like a cliff diving maybe coming up or something like that. Yeah, yeah, love doing like crazy extreme sports through FPV. So cliff diving, that's a, that's a cool one coming up, 
And uh, yeah, so you guys can imagine what he can do. They're, they're diving down like a giant cliff, and Johnny dives with them like in parallel. Yeah, you know, right, right before they hit the water. Yeah, I did. I first did it um, about a year ago, and then more recently in South Africa. With, I have a friend named Sam Colder, yeah. incredible filmmaker. Some of the you know. Is he like an actual cliff diver? Or he just does it for fun. He does it for fun. Yeah, not, yeah. Not competitive or something. Not competitively, but um, did did a little cliff driving situation in He's South. He's a lot higher than I would. I can tell you that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I didn't even. I would like to try, but you get on top of that cliff and then oh, you're like, so far. Nope, <laughs> not gonna do that. And then he does a gainer on top of. Oh uh, yeah. After like three <laughs> flips or something. You gotta be a full on gymnast. <laughs> At, at that point yeah. to, to send it that hard but um, yeah, yeah. Land, landing wrong is going to be painful yeah. no you know, I'd probably send a belly flop by, by accident of course but that's yeah. a safe way out though I mean it's you, know, you spot the landing the whole time <laughs> yeah. only hurts for a little bit oh man uh, maybe we can plug this real quick this is something coming if you guys haven't seen before FPV Crate we uh, partnered here with Get FPV it's a monthly subscription box. We're on month two. It's being delivered, I think, starting this week. So this is actually the August box. Johnny's going to get one, and I think he may open one for you guys later on his, uh, his own stream for you. So yeah. That. So this is kind of cool. I actually didn't love the idea of a uh, box crate, like, looking at it. But these guys let me open the, uh, the July one. You guys just came out with them. And it was honestly really fun. And the stuff in there was freaking really, really nice uh, products that, you know, it, it was cool. So I might, I might have to subscribe or hopefully you'll hook me up. <laughs> <laughs> These things are actually pretty sweet. Um, yeah, this, this one's uh, August. If you guys want to see more or find out more, it's fpvcrate.com. And you can uh, subscribe there and get more info on it. But we're, we're shipping out August box now. Mm -hmm. uh, people should be getting them any day. Yeah, and, some people um, have already gotten theirs. Uh -huh. um, we're just telling people, you know, don't throw any spoilers out for the rest of the world till like Wednesday ish next week. So, yeah, half the excitement is opening it up and finding out what's inside. Yeah, yeah, not knowing what you got, you know, it's, it's like, always. Yeah, it's like Christmas every month. That's what I'm saying. That's cool. Christmas every day. Let's see, any other questions before we go? Uh, Clay said, uh, what happened to Formula D? Uh, I think you touched on that a little bit. You got some more uh, drifting stuff coming up. Uh, I think he's referring to, I missed the last two. I had some other projects, uh, but I'll be back, back in FD soon. And uh, yeah. Someone asked a long time ago about how you got in contact with Toro Rosso F1. Torazo, that was Torazo. that was a lot of fun. Um, Red Bull contacted me and invited me out to try and film their F1 car during their testing. Oh yeah! It's their sister team, Torazo, and uh, that was one of the craziest experiences. Do you have any drones that can go 200 miles an hour to keep up with them? I do not. <laughs> um, so the, it was. I've never talked about that. You're like, once they go on a straightaway, you're just like hopeless to try to catch. There, I mean, it's the pinnacle of racing cars yeah. ever. So. It was just really remarkable to do it, but in the corners you could kind of keep up. So I, I haven't posted any, any of that footage on my own social media, but Red Bull posted a video, which I assume the, the, the viewer uh, watched, and it uh, kind of goes the BTS of that entire thing, which is pretty cool, but that was insane, yeah. Did, they, did you get in a car as well? Not in the F1 car, it only holds one person. No, bummer. Um, they didn't just let you take it out of the track? <laughs> no. Like, come on, you saw what I can do on the sticks? Come on, look, it's got sticks. We're good. Yeah, no, but... Chief yeah. said he can help out with a 200 mile an hour drone. <laughs> Let's get on it, baby. Let's send it. That's it. Nice. All right, last chance for some questions, guys. Don't forget your code for today's Here's Johnny. Just like a popular movie from forever ago, but now we're going to be using it with this awesome gentleman right here, guys. Wait, we didn't bring up either. We're teasing. We have a new, a new Johnny motor coming out. Oh, yeah. It's uh, just about in production right now, so it should be coming out in probably September. Yeah, a new, a little new size added to the to the lineup for a little bit more torque, and it's more fitted towards uh, the filming I'm doing now. So it um, yeah, a little more power, a little beefier. But yeah, so stay tuned for that. But these I use these currently, and they're incredible and everything I, I want. So yeah, perfect amissimo. Hi Cody. Cody Madison. What up, Cody? How's it going, bro? Cool Red says peace. Um, Yako's wondering if you have any plans for New Zealand this year or anytime soon. Oh, y'all, I've heard New Zealand's one of the most beautiful places on the planet. Um, yeah, if I could fly for a year, that would be where I'd choose. Yeah. So all the all these crazy places I go to, I'm not self-funding them. They're uh, quite expensive to travel to, so a lot of it is for like these crazy action sport filming gigs with you know people around the world who want to try FPV. So. 
I assume that would be high up on some like production production teams list, but I'm sure it's also very expensive to go there. So right. eventually I'll make it out. It but looks, if anybody can capture cool footage from there, maybe, you, I'd, I'd next, like to see it. Next Lord of the Rings, maybe. You know? yeah, oh like yeah, they filmed there in New Zealand, right? Should we pitch who's the director of that movie? <laughs> Someone out of our pay grade to reach? Probably. Never. Just show them the footy. Yeah. Be like, come on, we're going to use these in Star Wars, Lord of the Rings. Yep, that, 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 that's that simple. Everything. That's put how this it goes. Black it's magic it. on. You know, we, just quiet. the same. We got into it. You know, We saw one video. We were hooked. If we can do that same thing for Hollywood, bye. Yeah. Yeah, Peter yeah. Jackson. Yeah, he lives out in New Zealand. <laughs> oh, yeah. Perfect. Hit up my boy Steven Spielberg. Yeah. Mm. It's called Drum Retreat 2020 coming to Zealand. <laughs> I'll go. <Just> <laughs> Buy a drum retreat. I just need to get up. Give me some time. <laughs> now. All right, guys. Well, thanks for hanging out. We, uh, we've we had fun here catching up with Johnny and sharing a little bit with what he's been up to and uh, how he's been having fun in the industry and a little bit of what the future is going on. Stay tuned for that. We have some exciting stuff coming up with Johnny. Uh, look out for the RTF drone with the HD system we'll have coming up with some Johnny gear on it. And uh, the new motor's coming out. Uh, the crate's coming out. For Johnny will show you maybe a little behind the scenes of coming up too. And uh, let us know in the comments if there's anything else you want us to ask. Johnny's going to edit some videos, you know, some videos, behind some on. Bangers. That's right. Yeah. Cheers, guys. That was really cool. Thank you for the questions and happy flying. Uh, yeah. Peace. Yeah. Peace out.